So what's going on, YouTube? Well, I'm a little upset today. Uh, I'm a veteran, disabled veteran. I am getting a VA disability, so I am receiving payment. And I am currently appealing my decisions. My problem is, is both of my knees. I had ACL reconstructions in both my left and my right knee. And there's about 40% cartilage missing out of my right knee, which is mainly the knee that I'm fo I'll focus on in this video. Uh, missing 40% of my cartilage in my right knee. And I also really did, uh, I think, five, six years ago or something like that, I retore my graph. I was in, I was in during, uh, I was in in 1998 to 2004. And from what I was told when I came out here to Colorado and spoke to a couple of orthopedics out here, they said that, oh, you were part of the old surgeries. And I said, well, what do you mean? What, what do you mean part of the old surgeries? He says, well, that's when we actually looked at your knee, determined that you had just an ACL tear, and we didn't look at your MCL or your LCL or anything like that. That's so wonderful. So they did, didn't really technically fix my knee. They just fix my ACL I guess and they didn't even really do that but anyway okay I'm asking for an increase in about the highest you can go on a in, just for instability on a right on a knee is 30 percent according to this and I've been doing this appeal process for quite some time obviously since I got out in 2004 so all right but I want to just want to share this with you um okay they're basically saying that when i got my examination my right knee instability measured about five to ten millimeters which is considered moderate okay i don't know what their definition of moderate is obviously their definition is going to be different from my definition because obviously i'm the patient and i'm the one that's actually going through the knee problem not them okay Based on your objective medical evidence of, rec of record, a 20% evaluation is warranted for your right knee instability, which is moderate. That is what I'm receiving now. A higher evaluation of 30% is not warranted unless there is instability or subluxation, which is severe, which measures 10 to 15 millimeters. A 30% evaluation is the highest evaluation warranted for instability of a knee joint. There is no objective medical evidence of record demonstrating a 30% evaluation is warranted based on instability entitlement to an evaluation in excess of 20% for right knee ACL toes post-operative with instability is denied. So basically they said, no, we're not going to increase. That. Now they did say in here, there's no objective evidence. So if you have a weak stomach, I'm going to show you my knee, what my knee does. Hopefully, I can get a good view of it. Hopefully, we can see that. Okay. I don't know whether or not you can see that. Right there. So. I hope you were able to see that. If not, maybe I could do this. Okay, maybe that'll work. Okay. Okay, as you can see, my knee does all kinds of goofy shit. All right. I hope you were able to see that. My knee goes everywhere. It's not even a joint. It's it's almost like a total 360 ball socket joint. That's basically all it is. It just sits there and it goes like that. 
So, I don't know what their definition of severe but is, but I do have to tell you that every time I walk anywhere, I actually have to be very, very careful because the slightest crack and difference in pavement, if I hit that just right, I just fall down. So I'm actually very, very careful. And if you can't tell, which you probably will, I am a tad overweight. I have been working on that. I have lost 25 pounds. It is a pain in the ass when you have both your knees the way that they are, though. But slowly but surely, last year I lost 25. This year I want to lose another 25. So let's hit it up. But I told you that to basically give you a little bit of an overview on how the VA, what the VA does uh, when you do appeals and stuff like that, and what a veteran actually kind of goes through. I, I hope it I hope it showed something on my knee. I hope you were able to see what my knee is. But beside the point, I'll keep putting in an appeals and stuff like that, and I'll keep fighting for myself. But I told you that just to tell you this. If they're basically saying that my knee, that's moderate, think about some of these other veterans out there that are claiming post-traumatic stress and they're not even getting care. They're getting denied. They're going through appeal process after appeal process. And some of them, think about it, they're going through post-traumatic stress. Do you really think they're actually going to keep up with on it? And let me tell you what. The VA isn't very friendly when it comes to the appeal process and things like that because, I mean, let's be honest, you, what you're essentially asking for is I want you to increase my disability so you can give me more money because I served you for six years active duty and four years in the reserves and I can, I have knee problems right now now because of tearing my ACL while I was on active duty you know be like anything else workman's comp stuff like that but think about all those veterans that are having a hard time getting care recently went on a I uh, wouldn't say that it's more of a vacation. Went to go see my father, who is also actually a veteran. Went to go see my father in South Carolina. My wife and I traveled from Colorado all the way out to South Carolina. We ended up stopping for gas. I can't remember whether or not it was in Tennessee or Kentucky. I want to think it was in Kentucky somewhere. I met this other guy. He was just walking. Had a hat on. Veteran. Shook his hand. How you doing, sir? What's going on? He asked me how, you know, he said, are you involved with the veterans? Yes, sir, I am. This is how they treat me. I said, yeah, you know, it could be better. Maybe I'll do a vet video on all you guys that think you want a single payer health plan. I'll let you know all about that one. And while we were talking, he told me that he had cancer and that he was getting treatment. But here's the thing. He told me that there was only three methods in Kentucky to treat his particular cancer. I can't remember what he had. If he sees this video, I'm sorry. <laughs> I apologize. I can't remember. But there was five available in Florida and they wouldn't let him go down to Florida to get those other two treatments which were better had better results to it he wanted to go down there and try they wouldn't bring that stuff up to Kentucky so it's that doesn't make any sense to me that you would offer five a veteran in Florida five different types of uh, treatments for cancer 
and Kentucky would only do three. Strange. Kentucky or Tennessee? Still can't remember. But if any of you know of any other veterans that are struggling with this, struggling with the VA process, appeal process, uh, any of your friends and family that do have this stuff, because the VA is not going to let you really know. The Air Force really isn't going to let you know, you know, what you may be entitled to after you get out. Uh, they did for us. There was a class that you could go to. You know, I mean, you got a choice of whether or not you really want to go to it or not. But you had a choice on whether or not you wanted to go to it. But, you know, and that all depends on how people evaluate. You know, I mean, uh, some of these evaluators will tell you, oh, you have post-traumatic stress, but you may not have enough of it to qualify for a certain percentage. I don't know. But I think post-traumatic stress, if you're, if you're even remotely... Uh, diagnosed with it. I think it's I, I think it's an automatic 100%, I think. Let's say it's something else. There was and it, and it actually might be true. When I was when we were getting out, when I was getting out, there was a guy I know this video is getting long. There was a guy that said um, when he, we were in the class, he was basically telling us that there was a guy back in like the 80s. Uh, he was on he was in the navy, he was on a vessel. He read a book, read a book, read a book about Vietnam, claimed post-traumatic stress, and instantly got 100%. He said that there were uh, there were other evaluators. He didn't tell, I, I think he said they were somewhere in California. He said some of these evaluators believe that when you get out of the military, you don't get nothing. Now, this is all the way back in the day, so this is 2004. I hope that evaluator is not there anymore. But, you know, it does it does matter who evaluates you. It really does. I've seen people get, you know, I've heard of people getting certain percentages, you know, 30% for their wrist, their carpal tunnel or whatever or something like that. I've got arthritis in my right knee, degenerative joint disease, and my ACL is still torn. That's only worth 20. I do actually have to kind of walk every day. But, like I said, this is not about me. This is about all those other veterans that have the serious freaking problems. I just got a knee problem. That's, in my opinion, that's not serious. We need to take care of the veterans that really do have the very serious problems that are actually struggling with this. With this type of appeal process. You know, this... You know, I, I can't say whether or not you can blame it on whatever administration, if whatever you feel, if, you know, if it's politics, if you think it's Bush or Obama, I think they're one of the same. So it's all from the same establishment. But yeah, if anybody knows, maybe a veteran, they don't know what to do, you know, my cousin just joined the uh, Marines, and I told him, hey, before you get out, you need to come talk to me at, you know, get things straight for you and stuff like that. But, you know, but let's go. Let's start helping some of these veterans out. And I know it's January 6th and the Christmas tree is still up. But, all right. I hope all of you have a great night.